شعت شموس الهدي بالكلمات فأنارت الأفهام بالآيات أسرج بنور العلم عقلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين الله سبحانه وتعالى سر النهول القرآن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم Call upon me and I will respond to you Here in this world there are several of rules Rule number one has to do with something called tabi'ah, nature. Rule number two has to do with something called the hidden rules, the unknown rules. If those two rules intersect, one cancels out the other. For example, fire burns. That's rule number one. If you throw a piece of paper in fire, it will burn. The second rule is that if that paper was wet and had water or humid in it, it will not burn. So the second rule canceled out the first rule. Let me give you a clear example of a mother who is the most merciful to her child and most generous to her child. That's rule number one. Every mother is generous and kind to her child. However, rule number two, if that child wanted a knife or a gun, the second rule, which is the wisdom, the rule of wisdom, would cancel out the first rule. If my son wanted a gun or a knife, yes, I am merciful. Yes, I am generous. But the rule of wisdom would cancel that out. I would not give him the knife or the gun. Now the whole point of this introduction is the answer to a question that many people ask today. We pray to Allah, we supplicate to Allah, but yet our du'as are not being answered. We go to the rule, rule number one, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Call upon me and I will respond to you. That is a rule. But the second rule is the hidden rule. The unknown rule. When it intersects, it cancels out this first rule. So if we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something that is not good for us, Allah knows that what we're asking for is not good for us. When we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something and Allah does not respond to us at the moment, it's because Allah is waiting for the perfect time that He will give us what we answered. He will respond to it. So here's the answer. There is a rule that cancels out the other. Many of us pray and supplicate. Yes, Allah promised in this verse. But we say, we end up saying, I won't pray anymore. I won't supplicate because my du'as are not being answered. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best for us. Likewise, how a mother knows the best for her child, she would not lend him the gun or give him the knife. So here's the answer to this question. There is a story in a city called Nishabur it's a sh city 120 kilometers away from Meshhad. This scholar says that he went to the shrine of Sayyida Shatita. Now this beautiful lady, we don't know who her husband is. We don't know who her children are. We don't know anything about her more than that she had a great relationship with Imam Al-Kadhim alayhi salam. She had a great relationship with Ahlul Bayt alayhum salatu salam. It is known that when you vow for this lady, you make a nidhr, you, you have a problem that you're suffering from, and you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to respond to you, you make a nidhr. It will be answered. 
So that scholar said, I went to the city, Nishabur, to visit Sayyidah Shatita, and I saw a man from Emirates sitting there, and he mentioned his story. He said that I had a problem that lasted for 16 years. And one day I heard of this lady, Shatita, that's in Nishabur. If you make a nidr, a vow for her, what you ask for will be responded. So I said that I will read Quran in her, near her grave every year. And here I am. Those people who have great connections with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives them this eminence. Al-Muhaqqiq al-Qummi, he's buried near the shrine of Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam. One man said, every time I propose to a woman, I get rejected. Or if I get accepted, a problem happens and we end up separating. He said it happened a lot that one day I went to propose to a, a woman and I came to Al Muhaqqiq Al Qummi and I said to him, If I do get married, I will do this with, for you. I will vow for you. And in the same day, I did get married. So imagine those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them this ability. What would you imagine from Ahlul Bayt? How would you imagine from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who said in the Quran, Call upon me, I will respond to you. Yes, indeed, what we ask for, our supplications will be answered. However, if it is something that will harm us or something that's not beneficial for us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will delay it. Now, if we look at ourselves today and we compare it to yesterday, most of our da'as has been answered. Some took time, some you had to change your niyyah, your intention. And some Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was testing you. And many of what we ask for, that Allah does not respond for us, it's because it's not beneficial for us. And Allah wants the best and the good for us. A Shaykh Murtada al-Ha'iri, he used to visit Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam every Thursday night. So he would take a car, 16 hour drive from Qum to Mashhad just to visit Imam al -Ridha. When he arrives there, he does not do nothing but visit al Imam and come back. Imagine that 16 hour traveling by car, it's exhausting. And he would come back 16 hours, he would not do anything, he would not eat, he would not shop, he would not do nothing but visit the Imam and return back to Qum. He did that for about 68 times of his life. When he died, Al Mar'ashi Najafi saw him in his dream and he said to him, How are you today? He said, Once my family buried me in grave, I felt lonely. I felt so lonely that I didn't know what to do in that grave until I saw a sudden nur come in my grave and a man came approaching me telling me, I am Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha. You have visited me 68 times in your life. Now I am here today to visit you 68 times in your grave. Imagine that. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our supplications and to give us these blessings to visit our holy Imams in this world before we move on to the hereafter. وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين صحيح الله تعالى يقول وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم هذا قانون ولكن في موازات هذا القانون قانون الحكمة الإلهية بعض الأشياء التي نطلبها مو في صالحنا إحنا مشاعرنا محدودة مداركنا محدودة ولكن الله يعلم أن هذا الشيء مو في صالحنا ولذلك الله سبحانه وتعالى بحكمته لا يستجيب بعض الأدعية